Hello. Okay. We are going to try to talk louder because for some reason I don't talk loud enough uh, according to other people's opinions. Um, gonna work on that. I'm working on it currently as we speak. But happy whatever day it is. Um, it doesn't matter what day it is. You can still find happiness in it especially if you are a resident of the United States because other countries have it so much worse. So we are grateful for today. Um, I'm making this video because I had a discussion with someone that I was working with yesterday and it brought back to me so many emotions and so many things that I used to think about. But basically, I grew up in the nation of Islam uh, from birth until about kindergarten and then we still operated as nation Muslims but we didn't go to Savior's Day we didn't go to um, the bakery on Sundays anymore we didn't do any of that stuff so um, we started off again in in the your black Muslim bakery in Oakland this is before they shut it down I don't remember what year they shut it down but um, Basically, the, the gist of everything that I learned from the Nation of Islam was fear God, uh, love the leader, um, like almost at the same level that of the reverence that you have for God, and um, train up your children the way that they should go, and in this belief system and this religion um, and require excellence and require discipline. Um, and discipline should probably be a little bit higher up on that, um, on that list that I just gave. Discipline is probably the number one thing that they taught us. We were very disciplined at a very young age and they did not spare the rock <laughs> by, any, by any means. I remember um, when I was really little, being really afraid of this one teacher when um, they split the girls up and the boys. So you never, whatever class you had, you never had class with the opposite sex. It was always class with the same sex of people that you, and also the teacher was the same sex as you. So uh, there was this one male teacher that everybody was afraid of. <laughs> Because they knew if they got out of line, even if you were a girl, if you were an old enough girl and you got out of line, he was coming and he had like this thing. It was huge. It was, it kind of is reminiscent of the things that they use in fraternities to haze each other, but it looked like an oar on a boat, for a boat. Like it was huge. And he would just smack you, uh, smack your butt rather. Um, and it wasn't done in a way that everybody else didn't know what was going on. Like we could hear what was going on and some people could see as well. Um, but discipline was very important. And that is one of the only things that I have retained discipline and requiring discipline and requiring excellence were two of the only things that I retained. Actually, no, that's a lie. Requiring discipline, requiring excellence and diet. Um, health because they were very very strict about what we ate um, we didn't eat like the normal school ch school children's diet we had lentils <laughs> for lunch like lunch would be like lentils and a piece of bread or um, just very very healthy things it was it was never a um, burgers unless it was their tofu burgers that they make at the bakery like everything was organic everything was pretty fresh and um, high quality ingredients never like McDonald's that was that was unspoken we never ate pork obviously Muslims um, but discipline uh, requiring excellence and health diet were like the only things that I've taken from that experience. And when I was talking to this coworker, she was asking me, well, what made you change from being um, Nation of Islam Muslim to a Christian? Because I, I'm the only person in my family who is actually 
of practicing, that's a better word. The only person in my family who's a practicing Christian. Um, and it was strange, obviously, at first, um, when we moved from Oakland to Sassoon, and then we moved from Sassoon to Fairfield, and um, basically the further away that we got from that, from the Your Black Muslim Bakery, the further that we got from um, Islam in theory. So we still didn't celebrate any holidays. We still didn't, um, well, we didn't celebrate like the, the Christian holiday. The, they're really pagan. If you know anything, the Christmas pagan, New Year's pagan, um, most of the holidays that are on the American calendar are pagan, but we don't need to go there right now. We still at this point in time did not celebrate holidays. Um, we prayed in Arabic. Uh, we tried to maintain the, you know, washing of hands and praying multiple times a day kind of thing. But after a while, because my parents weren't really honest about it, we just kind of became lukewarm Muslims, I guess. Um, but we still maintain whenever someone asks you, like, what is your religion? What is your belief system? We would always say Muslim up until about uh, eighth grade when my father, for whatever reason, I still don't know to this day how this happened or why this happened. Maybe he was just trying to find um, something to believe in. But my father started making us go to this Baptist church in in the city that we lived in and it was really weird to us the children like we we're like why are we here <laughs> like why are you making us do this you know kind of thing and uh my mother made us join the usher board and i hated being an usher <laughs> being an usher was the worst for me because i don't really like talking to people and i am not the kind of person to tell other people what to do so putting those two together in a, in a job, in a church where I don't even believe in this stuff at the time was, it was very, it was like a culture shock experience for me, especially being a child in a black church. Um, and we kind of, as we, as we grew up a little bit and started getting older, again, my parents stopped coming to church um, I was pretty much the only one that stayed and I stayed because I was in a choir and I loved the music and I was actually listening during the sermons. Like I was actually listening. I was trying to figure out what is this really, what is this Bible? What are, what is this religion? What is this belief system really about? And um, I used to always ask questions. Like <laughs> I was the person in Sunday school who always had a question, always posing questions to the pastor and to the ministers. Like, why aren't there dinosaurs in the Bible? You know, stuff like that. Um, but I was very curious about this religion. And um, the more that I learned about it, the more that I learned that Islam not even Islam and Christianity, I don't want to say that, but the Quran has texts that are from the Old Testament. Um, so it, in a way it was familiar, but I noticed huge differences. And um, to answer that question of why did I go from being a Muslim, even albeit lukewarm, but being a Muslim to being a Christian, was oh my goodness i hope y'all can't see all that that's not what we going for here i'm just gonna crop that out <laughs> but the um the, the reason was because in the experience that i had um being raised in what for lack of a better words is really a cult um the difference between Christianity and Islam for me was grace. In Islam, from what I had experienced, and again, I can only speak to my own experiences and the things that I saw, um, there was no grace in Islam, not just from leaders and higher ups to the people, but also from God to the people. Like it's really kind of a gamble in Islam. 
you don't actually know. There is no surety that at the end of your life, you're going to be in heaven with the Lord or with, you know, the God that they believe in. There's no surety of that. You go throughout life trying to be in right relationship with God or trying to, you know, be saved because of what you do. Um, and I saw a problem with that once I encountered Christianity where this God realizes that in your own strength, you cannot do what he requires of you in order to be with him in heaven. And so he, this God, sacrificed himself in order to atone for the sins that you do. And that in and of itself was the only, that is, um, that is the gospel to me, that there is grace. There is this creator God who cares and loves his children so much. Yes, he has requirements. However, he is gracious enough to us to understand that we will always be human. And because he knows that we're always going to be human and that we're always going to do the wrong thing and we're always going to mess up, no matter what we do, no matter how many laws that he gives us or how hard we try to uh, maintain those laws and um, follow those laws and teach those laws to our children, that it, it doesn't matter how hard we try, we need someone to save us from ourselves. We needed someone to save us for ourselves. And um, and in Christianity, we have Jesus who, again, God in flesh and sacrificed himself. In Islam, you don't have that. The only person who, um, who can atone for your sin is you. And at the end of the day, your sacrifice, no matter, at least this was my mindset. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much you try to do, your sacrifice alone is not going to be great enough to cover the number of sins that you do. So um, yeah, that's that was my experience of uh, how did, because people ask me all the time, you know, they assume because I am a younger black woman who is very active in my church, that I am, um, that I was always saved or that I was always Christian. And that's not the case, you know? And I think that um, black Christians so often take for granted the gift, you know, that we have been given and if you understood how other religions were, you would take what has been given to you more seriously. You would be able to come into your church and, you know, lift up holy hands and really be grateful of the sacrifices and the things that God is doing for you. Even just in that moment that you're able to breathe. Like, I, um, sorry, someone's stepping on something weird um I sometimes I get upset at my church and if you look at one of my previous videos I I kind of went off on on the whole church and I I quit but then I wasn't allowed to quit because apparently they need me so um I'll be back at church on Sunday <laughs> but um I I get upset sometimes when I'm in there and I see that these people feel like they're doing God a favor by being at the church or they're so comfortable or they're so complacent in just sitting in a pew that they won't stand up and give God praise regardless of the song. Um, and I had to dial it back when I was thinking about this conversation that I had with this coworker because again, they don't, they don't understand what they have like they truly don't understand what they have and um sometimes it takes someone saying it and sometimes it takes losing the privileges of what you have and i hope 
um, for their sake that it is the former and not the latter that, you know, shocks Christians back into having a fire for God. But we'll see um, because y'all can see that it's getting dark. I can see that it's getting dark. Like there's nothing we we alone cannot stop what is coming. Um, and we know that it's coming. It's obvious. So y'all be blessed. Be prayed up. Um, if you don't have a relationship with God, that is the number one priority right now. Um, and yeah, I would love to know other people's thoughts in the comments. What is your reason for being Christian? Why are you Christian? You specifically, not why did your family bring you to church or why do you go to church? Because going to church, um, people say this to me all the time, especially men, whenever I ask them, like, why are you a Christian? They say, oh, you know, I, I, I like to go to church. I go to church this many times a month. And I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> like, that tells me absolutely nothing. Why do you believe what you believe? That's that's what I want to know. So uh, let me know in the comments. Why do you believe what you believe? Why are you a Christian? Or why are you not a Christian? Um, and 